So your eyes um, in general move together um, and they move binocular vision. You, you move inversion movements where your eyes are both doing the same thing. Both are tracking left, both are tracking right, up and down, except when you talk about virgins. And in virgins, your eyes are doing opposite things. So you should be able to converge and diverge. Um, look at something very close to you, look at something very far from you. Your mother always told you you shouldn't cross your eyes. Well, it's not really true. You should be able to cross your eyes. It just shouldn't bother you too much. So in order to test convergence, you have somebody focus on a target that's discrete again, and they bring it in slowly um, in midline towards the tip of their nose. And the guidelines for this, or the, the, um, the significance is that normal folks uh, have um, are able to maintain the image one single target up to five centimeters to, from the tip of their nose. So if you have a patient who has double vision and reports double vision at a point of six centimeters or greater from the tip of their nose, then that's abnormal. They have a convergence insufficiency. Typically we test this at least a few times just because there's such a fatigue um, effect following concussion. And sometimes you'll see the first test is normal, but then subsequent tests are abnormal. And again, this is often a finding in concussion. So the common things you see following um, concussion and the virgin system are convergence insufficiency, which I just um, explained to you. And that, let me, let's take a look at this first video. Again, as she brings the target in towards her nose, you'll notice that her left eye does not converge as the right eye does. And she's seeing double when that happens. And actually, it drifts out even more the further in it gets. So her left eye just kind of goes out and, and doesn't, doesn't converge in. And that's an example of a convergence insufficiency. Now, we also see the flip side of this. We'll sometimes see an increased virgence response or convergence spasm sometimes. So let's see, look at this next video. These are eye movements um, with uh, video infrared goggles, which we often show because it's so much easier to see some of these eye movement responses. But I'm asking this patient to look with their eyes to their right. So imagine this, you're looking right at the patient and I'm asking her to look right. Did you see what happened initially? Her eyes came together, they converged, her pupils got small. She didn't look, she couldn't look right. Her, the, there was a convergent spasm that came, um, came into play. I'm asking her to look left, she can look left. However, look how smaller pupils still are because she's still in that middle of that convergent spasm. So it can manifest you know, in room light, it can manifest when you put them in the dark, it can happen with gaze, it can happen with positional testing, but you can see this response. And, it's important when there's also visual symptoms going along with it.